Hello and welcome to today's lesson on magnetic fields which forms part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look at identifying the properties of magnetism. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson you should be able to state the key words of magnetism, detail the basic properties of magnetism and understand what mag magnetic fields are and what they represent. So in today's lesson we're going to look at the following part of the specification poles of a magnet and magnetic fields so what does this following object show us this object is a magnet now a magnet has two poles it has the south pole and it has the north pole now if you had a north pole next to a south pole the two magnets would attract each other because opposite poles attract but if you had two like poles like two north poles or two south poles the two magnets would repel each other because the same poles of magnets repel each other. Now attraction and repulsion occurs as the magnets experience a force called the electromagnetic force. So when two magnets are brought close to each other they exert a force on each other. Now this is a non-contact force as the magnets do not need to be touching to exert a force on each other. Now attraction and repulsion between two magnetic poles are examples of a non-contact force. Now the region around a magnet where this force can occur is called the magnetic field. So in today's lesson we're going to look at magnets and this magnetic force. Now there are two types of objects which interact via the force of magnetism. Magnets and magnetic materials. Now these objects are similar but not the same. They're both affected by the magnetic force but how are they different to each other? Well a permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field. So we're going to consider bar magnets which are magnets shaped like like a bar. Now it's important to note that magnets are objects which produce their own magnetic field. Now a compass contains a bar magnet inside of it so we can consider a compass to be a bar magnet. The earth has a magnetic field and it has the same type of magnetic field as a bar magnet so we can consider the earth to be a bar magnet because the magnetic field of the earth is very very similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Now interestingly the Earth's magnetic field is produced by the movement of ferrous or iron based compounds in the Earth's core. Now the, uh, the core of Earth is mostly iron so because that's magnetic it allows the Earth to have a magnetic field. Now because it's due to the movement of the core this causes the magnetic fields uh, of the Earth to be at an angle and constantly moving. So this actually means that in reality geographic North Pole and Magnetic North Pole are rarely in alignment. So it's more accurate to draw the magnetic field of the Earth like this. So you tend to actually find that Geographic North Pole is found in Greenland whilst Magnetic North Pole tends to be found in Canada. So they're not in the exact same position. They aren't completely aligned. So it's important to know, like we said before, a permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field. Now all magnets produce a magnetic force which near a magnet or magnetically susceptible when near a magnetic or magnetically susceptible material. Now the magnetic force is a non-contact force. This means a magnet projects a magnetic field to represent the area in which the magnetic force can be exerted. So this means that magnets and magnetic materials do not have to be touching to exert a magnetic force on each other. Now the magnetic field therefore is a region of space where the non-contact magnetic force can be exerted. Exerted. Now the lines on this diagram show the magnetic field. Now it's important to note that the magnetic field of all magnets projects into infinity, however the magnetic force decreases with distance from a magnet. Now you can work this out from a diagram as the density of the magnetic field lines or more scientifically speaking the magnetic flux density indicates the strength of the magnetic field. So the denser the magnetic field lines the stronger the magnetic field. So you can see in this particular idea, we can say the closer the magnetic field lines are to each other, the stronger the magnetic field in that region of space. Now this indicates to us that the strength of the magnet decreases when the distance from the magnet increases. This is shown as the magnetic field lines spread out the further you move away from the magnet. Now it's important to note that magnetic field lines show the path a positively charged object will take if placed there, which is indicated 
denoted by the arrows of the field lines. So we can also say it as the direction of a magnetic field at any point is given by the direction of the force that would act on another north pole placed at that particular point. So the direction of a magnetic field line is from north pole of a magnet to the south pole of a magnet. Now it's important to note that magnetic field lines can never cross over each other. So if I'm looking at our diagram, we can tell that our magnetic field is the strongest at the poles, the ends of the magnet, because the field lines are closest together. The, the, field, the field density is the highest. So also as well, the magnetic field lines spread out as you move away from the object. So this means the magnetic field decreases in strength as you move away from the magnet. Now we define magnetic north pole as the part of the magnet where the field lines leave the object. Now technically the name for this pole is the north seeking pole as it's always pointed towards the north pole of the earth and we define the magnetic south pole as the part of the magnet where the field lines enter the object. Now again technically the name for this pole is the south seeking pole as it always points towards the south pole of the earth. So like we said the direction of a magnetic field line is from the north seeking pole of a magnet to the south seeking pole of the magnet. Now as all magnets are magnetic dipoles, this means that every magnet has two poles. So field lines leave and enter all magnetic objects. Now a magnetic monopole is impossible in the universe as the field lines need to leave the magnet then enter the magnet. So if a magnet is cut, then each segment will form a north and south pole. So that's a major difference between electrically charged objects, which can either be plus or minus, and magnetically charged objects, which have to have a north north and south pole. So what do we know? This is a magnetic field of a bar magnet and magnets produce their own magnetic field. So the field lines have arrows showing a direction and they come out of north pole and go into south pole. The field lines are more concentrated at the poles. This indicates to us the magnetic field is the strongest at the poles as the field lines are the most concentrated but magnetic field lines can never cross each other. Now there are two types of object which interact by the force of magnetism. Magnets, which are objects that produce their own magnetic fields, and magnetic materials. Magnetic materials are objects which are affected by the magnetic field. So magnets are objects which can be attracted or repelled by other magnets, whilst magnetic materials are objects which can only be attracted by other magnets. So magnets can be demagnetized and return to being magnetic materials, whilst magnetic materials can become magnetized and turn into a magnet. But what makes a magnet a magnet? Well, magnetic materials are materials which contain charged objects, normally ions. Now in magnetism we call these charged areas domains. Now it's important to note that if a material contains domains it's a magnetic material it has the potential to become a magnet. So the magnetic elements are iron, cobalt and nickel and as steel is mostly composed of iron it is also magnetic. Now the more domains the easier it is to, to align them makes the material a stronger magnet. If a material does not contain any domains it is not a magnetic material. Now when the domains are aligned and all in acting in the same direction a magnetic material becomes a magnet. So if the domains are all in any random direction you have an unmagnetized magnetic material but if all the domains are pointed in the same direction you get a magnet. So the line up of a domain causes a magnetic field to be produced in an object. If the domains are not lined up the domains cancel each other out and no magnetic field is projected into the universe. Now the process of magnetization is lining up the domains, but the process of demagnetization is mixing up the domains. Now we can demagnetize a magnet by either dropping a magnet, but that only works with quite weak magnets, or heating up a magnet because it disrupts the domain structure. Now a hard magnet, like steel, can remain magnetized for a long period of time, but a soft magnet, like iron, cannot remain magnetized for a very long period of time. So it's hard to disrupt the domain alignment in steel, but it's easy to do so in iron. So it's a very, very important idea. Now, magnets, like we said before, are materials that produce magnetic fields. So they can either attract or repel other magnets. Remember, same poles repel each other and opposite poles attract each other. But magnetic materials are materials affected by magnetic fields. They don't produce 
their own. Now, magnetic materials can only ever be attracted to magnets, and this is a key difference between magnets and magnetic materials. Magnets produce magnetic fields, so can attract or repel, but magnetic materials are affected by magnetic fields. They can only attract. So let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. The poles of a magnet are the places where the magnetic forces are strongest. The two magnets are brought close together and they exert a force on each other. Two like poles will repel each other, two unlike poles will attract each other. Attraction and repulsion between two magnetic poles are examples of the non-contact force. A permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field. The region around a magnet where a force acts on a magnet or a magnetic material like iron, steel, cobalt or nickel is called a magnetic field. The force between a magnet and a magnetic material is always one of attraction. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the distance from the magnet. The field is the strongest at the poles of the magnet, and the direction of the magnetic field at any given point is given by the direction of the force that would act on another north pole placed at that point. The direction of a magnetic field line is from the north seeking pole of a magnet to the south seeking pole of the magnet. A magnetic compass contains a small bar magnet, and the Earth has a magnetic field. The compass needle points in the direction of the Earth's magnetic magnetic field. So you should be able to describe how to plot the magnetic field pattern of a magnet using a compass, draw the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet showing how strength and direction change from one point to another, and explain the behaviour of a magnetic compass in which is how it's related to the evidence that the core of the earth must be magnetic. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we can state the key words of magnetism, we can detail the basic properties of magnetism and electromagnetism, and we can understand what magnetic fields are and what they represent. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on magnetic fields, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Combined Science. Thank you very, very much and have a lovely day.